Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here with the second part of the 18th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand from Jazz's point of view here at the LA Poker Classic final table. They are heads up. He's heads up against Doc Sands, who is an extraordinarily good tournament player. And whenever you are a less experienced player against a very experienced player, you really don't need to shy away from getting it all in, especially whenever you have a hand that's pretty good. And obviously, Ace-King is good. So heads up. You're just looking to get all the money in. So here Sands raises. Jazz likes the 3-bet to 80,000. I like his relatively large 3-bet. Um, I think the button's incorrect here. He, he's out of posi he's going to be out of position in the hand, and because of that, you don't really mind 3-betting. And trying to induce Doc Sands to 4-bet is very good. Plus, Doc Sands is sort of known for 4-betting all the time. <laughs> and if a guy's 4-betting a lot, you can absolutely not be scared to get it all in with Ace-King. So, sure enough, Doc Sands does 4-bet, and Jazz elects to go all in. Pretty standard stuff. So, whenever you're in the spot, you always need to think, how wide would I go all in in this situation? And if I'm against a player that opens, like, 90% of buttons, and then 4-bets, like, half the time he gets 3-bets, you need to be going with a very wide range here. I would say, like, suited connectors, uh, certainly all big pairs, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, I mean, notice they're only 60 big blinds deep, so it's not like they're extraordinarily deep stacked or anything. And he's against an aggressive player. Now, if Doc Sands was very tight, say Doc Sands is an extraordinarily tight player that raises like half the time in three bet or four bets never, I would say you should actually flat ace king and then play it from there because your opponent's going to fold everything. But against a player like Doc Sands, you can go with, go with a very very wide range, and I don't I think it would be perfectly fine. I actually discussed this in my book Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. Um, you know, if you get heads up and you are a big underdog to your opponent, you're losing a lot of equity. And I definitely suggest everyone get some experience playing heads up. And the cool part about heads up is you can get experience playing against anyone. All you need is one other person. Or you can just get online and play heads up, sit and goes on any of the random poker sites. So uh, I definitely suggest you get some experience at that. But anyways, right here, uh, Jazz does shove ace-king. If I was him, though, I'd be shoving, like, ace-jack, 9-8 suited, King, queen, all sorts of stuff. And I would have gotten snapped off by queens, and I would have went broke. But in this spot, Jazz does get it in with a coin flip, which is an excellent result whenever you are a weaker player than your opponent. And he does get an ace and ends up winning a pile of chips. So that's going to be that for this week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. If you guys have any comments, or if you want me to review one of your hands, please feel free to send it in, and I will check it out. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.